Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about delivery pipelines. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what should I do if I feel that my company treats me as just a delivery pipeline and not a creative programmer who has the ability to affect the work that I do? Well, uh, you can pretty much just switch jobs or you will have to try your best to have an open dialogue with your stakeholders. That's all you can really do. So this is something that I think is very... It is a, it is a real problem and I learned this lesson as well, the, the hard way. And I think that before... I think you should go through this. I really do because I think it will make you a better... You will have... You will become a more senior developer and you will start to understand why it is that companies such as Facebook or Google or so forth and other companies talk about agile practices and engagement and having trying to push for passionate developers and trying to get rock stars and all that stuff the the reason why this happens is because the, the there is a big portion of companies who treat software developers as a formality, basically as a contractor, where there's not really an interest in a dialogue between the, s the engineers and the stakeholders. They're simply treating you as a service. And what that service is supposed to do is that if I have the specification, it's pretty much what we call waterfall in many cases, uh, I should be able to plan out work and like get the specification going and then I should just give you that specification and then I expect you to output working system on the other side. This way of working is very attractive to an organization that has a structure where usually at the very least the uh, the way that they do us make a sale uh, a sell or like the, the way that they do work isn't really optimized for having a dialogue back and forth they are just treat as I was saying like they're just treating the engineering department as a f as a formality and I've been in a company such as this and it is uh, it, it is um, well it was very enlightening because the way it worked was very simple the backlog that the backlog that we had was I think around 10 years long in terms of work time and it was absolutely, it was completely booked all the time. There was never a moment practically unless something got blocked where we didn't have more at work than we could possibly ever finish. And the company kept on making deals, of course. And the, the way it worked was that uh, by the time that we got the specification, that we even knew that this product was coming up, it had been signed and and put on uh, put on paper in a contract by the sales department months ahead. There wasn't like and there was absolutely no way for us to have a dialogue. I mean, the sales department wasn't even in the same country as us. Well, I, I, some of them were in our country, but a lot of them like yeah, they were in a completely different part of the world. There was no like cross like all these trendy things that you've heard about that we consider to be best practices today. Uh, cross-functional teams, anything like that. There was the engineering department, and there were sales and like design and so forth. And each like we did the thing that you probably heard that you shouldn't be doing, which is throw the thing over the wall throw it over the wall okay so now we're done with our part Let's throw it to the next team and just continue that process and there for better or for worse it did work for the company our team like uh, in the engineering department we tried our best to work in a more agile fashion and I think that we managed to do it within our own team but there's only like the problem with being cross-functional is that if it's just one team doing it it's not really worth all that much we can have as many practices as we as we want, but we're still in a delivery cycle that is very much like a waterfall system. And uh, yeah, it, this is something that you can't really do much about because if your stakeholder just views you as a as a code a code monkey and you treat are treated that way, and you should know that this happens to quite a lot of programmers. That's all really all you can do. I like to say that uh, there's a Swedish expression where uh, and I don't think there is uh, there might be an English version of it but it, the literal translation is pearls for swines 
or pearls for pigs where the basically what it means is that if you hold up a bunch of pearls to a pig they won't understand the value of those pearls I mean they might muck around a little bit on them with their snout and they might try to eat them but they don't understand their value and the same thing goes for quite uh, in your situation as well it goes for quite a lot of companies where they don't see the value in having a back and forth discussion with the engineers or so forth or the companies working in a way where they they want to do work this way and you can't really sh unless you have the sort of influence where you can uh, change this they're not going to listen to you so you can lobby you can suggest things and maybe you'll see some change some change happen but if the company has optimized such as in my case the they had optimized for the sales department I imagine that they had a pretty fun time because they could basically do whatever they wanted in many cases but the engineering department we, we had to deal with literally whatever thing that they promised the customer regardless of what that was and I can tell you right I can tell you now the system really reflected that it was absolute crap but it did do the job so what I want you to take away from this is that if you find yourself uh, looking to be a creative programmer and you're being treated as a <coughs> as a software service basically where they input a request and you should spit out code uh, the only thing you can really do is to talk to your stakeholders and try to lobby for change and I can promise you I can almost promise you that you're not going to get very far with that because the only people who ever really get any traction on that is usually are higher up managers or people like that who are supposed to change the company uh, so you can really only quit change jobs go to a startup go to another company that uh, works in a certain way or in a different way or so forth uh, because what you're trying, or you're basically do, trying to to uh, sell <laughs> sell pearls to pigs, they have no understanding of the value that this thing brings, and since they don't understand its value, they don't really care about it, uh, and that's where you are. And it doesn't really matter if there's a hundred other ways of doing things better, because from their perspective, this is working you can and you can feel however you want about that but at the end of the day they're the ones who are in charge of running the company and you can of course think that they are doing a shit job but at the end of the day they're gonna do what they're gonna do and so can you actually because you're a software developer and if you don't wanna be part of that you have options have a great day